Good morning. Good morning and happy Sunday, YouTube family. I'm Reverend Wendy with the Community of Compassion. And this is our weekly spirit talk time, a time for us to get together and to receive some inspiration and some motivation and some hope to carry us through the week. I am so grateful for everyone who joins me. As usual, I just want to say thank you to those who tune in, to those who listen, to those who like and share and comment. Uh, please continue subscribing. Please continue sharing. And it is just incredibly <laughs> motivational to me. Hi, Jen. Yes, you made it on time. <laughs> I'm so grateful uh, for everyone who participates in these talks. Uh, it seems like every week, I, you know, there's there's more and more things that come up that that apply to the topics that I want to talk about. And today is is really no different. There's so much happening. But my topic for today actually is on cultivating patience. Worth of the weight is the title. Patience and worth the weight. And when we think about that word patient, uh, how many of us can identify anybody? that we know that has perfect patience, because you know what? It is and not me. Hey, Yeshua, I see you, brother. <laughs> I am probably, I don't want to say that I'm an impatient person, but let me just say I'm a work in progress. <laughs> and if anybody else out there feels me, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I know that we live in a, a society of immediate gratification. And so we want what we want when we want it. Uh, but that's not how things work. That's not how the world works. And so what we have to do is find ways to cultivate um, patience within ourselves. Um, how many of you have heard the saying, um, what is it? How does it go? Patience is it's worth the wait. Um, um, good things come to those who wait. Yeah, that's it. That's the one I was looking for. Good things come to those who wait. That sounds really good in theory, but in practice, we all know it is difficult. And so today I just wanna spend a little bit of time talking to you and agreeing with you on um, just how difficult cultivating patience can be. How many of us are waiting right now for something to change in our, our lives, in our immediate lives, in our circumstances, in the world in particular, and it feels like it has been taking forever but there's such a beauty and an opportunity in waiting so that the outcome that we do receive, that we are waiting for is one that we can fully appreciate. So good morning. <laughs> patience is a virtue. And I would have to say that patience is probably one of the most challenging virtues to express out of all of them, uh, at least for me it is. I work as hard as I can to be patient and wait for things to work themselves out but uh, and things to resolve themselves, but I, I'm not always perfect. And I'm not just talking about little things. I'm not talking about, you know, when you think about people who are impatient, you think about people in traffic, um, you know, that are tooting their horns, that can't wait to get to where they're going, um, you know, or maybe we're just impatient with a, a, a personality that we're in conflict flicked with at work or, or in our family. But then there's bigger things too. I mean, there are people who are patiently waiting for uh, discoveries to be made for their illness. There are people who are patiently waiting um, for uh, their children to be released from captivity. So it really spans the gamut. But what I wanna talk about today is how do we cultivate patience? How do we, how do we grow while we're waiting. Um, there's a scripture that describes the fruit of the spirit. It's over in Galatians and it says, you know, the fruit of the spirit are love, peace, joy, patience, um, kindness. Against such, there is no law. And when it says there is no law, it means these are available in full supply. There's nothing, you. there can't be too much kindness available. There can't be too much love available. And there certainly is enough patience available for us and in us to keep us while we're waiting. Patience is described as long suffering. And when I talk about 
um, these kinds of concepts, I also want to define them because sometimes a word can lose its meaning if we don't remind ourselves about the definition. So can I just share with you a definition of what patience is? It is defined as the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> Patience is defined as the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. So if you are being delayed, if somebody is getting on your nerves, if there is a trouble all around you, and we certainly know there is suffering all around us, can we tolerate it? Can we handle it? Patience gives us the opportunity to go through it and to manage it without getting angry or upset. Doesn't mean you won't get angry, but the goal, <laughs> patience says, is to be able to go through these things and experience them without getting angry or upset. Some words that are synonymous with patience are forbearance, resignation, fortitude, endurance, perseverance, acceptance, and tolerance. Let me ask you this, and this is just for your own point of reflection. What is it that causes you to lose patience the most? What is it that you cannot tolerate? It drives you over the edge. Is it uh, the, the, the people who are, are driving too slow in front of you? Is it um, your your work and the job that you're doing? Is it the state of the world? What what are the things that drain us of our ability to, to, to be patient and wait for things to change? That's how we get to the root of how we develop better patience. And one of those being to do what we can to remove ourselves from situations and people that make us feel impatient. But I'll get to that in a moment. As virtues go, patience is a very quiet one. It's often exhibited behind closed doors and not on a public stage. It could be you as a parent telling a bedtime story to your child for the third time. Um, it could be uh, a nation awaiting the recount of a political outcome, but it's the public impatient people that get all of the attention people who are, who are moving slow in the lines. You know, I'm, I, I'm a single parent, but my daughter's an adult now, but I can just remember always rushing her. I always had to get out of the door and she seemed to just, you know, taking time to, to get dressed and to find all her things to get her to school. And, you know, I would find myself, you know, tapping, come on, let's go. We got to go. We got to. And then I had to think to myself, what, what am I really rushing for? You know, some of the things that make us impatient are some things that are under our control. The fact that we may wind up late for something, the fact that we may get into traffic and and get upset because we're stuck and we run into a traffic jam, well, maybe to resolve feeling impatient, we can leave the house a little earlier. Maybe instead of rushing around and, and, and with my, my daughter, instead of rushing her in the mornings to get everything together, we started getting things together the night before so that that way the morning was not as hectic. So are there are things that we can do, but they're not all, they're sometimes easier said than done. And I appreciate that. Um, having patience <laughs> means being able to wait calmly in the face of frustration or adversity. So anywhere that there is frustration or adversity, we as a person who is looking for, you know, to cultivate our patients can find ways to practice it with our kids in our relationships and in our own lives. You know, one of the people that we are most impatient with is ourselves. And the way to be able to cultivate a virtue to express to others is in cultivating it within ourselves. And so I, I'm working on it. I know. And, and just looking around us, there's so much happening. We want change right now. I don't know about you, but if the election personally could be tomorrow, I'd be all for it. <laughs> and, you know, if we could 
have our particular personal choice of who we wanted uh, to be uh, in the presidency. You guys who know me know who my choice would be. But at the same time, we have to have patience with the process. We have to trust that what it is that we are waiting for, what it is that we are patiently waiting for will ultimately be worth the wait. And so what can we do to help cultivate patience while we're waiting? What are some of the things we can do? Well, let me share another scripture with you that talks about this in Isaiah 40, 31, verse 31, it says, but they that wait upon God will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. So what that scripture tells me, and I like scripture to kind of inform me and give me encouragement for how to get through practical situations. That's the type of minister I am. That's my ministry to take biblical and spiritual principles. They don't have to be biblical, but spiritual principles and help us apply them to our everyday lives. Because I think that a lot of our uh, religious books are manuals for, for living. I think that we can draw lessons from the stories, you know, from the passages, from the parables, and we can apply those in our practical lives. So when I read that scripture that says, they that wait upon God will renew their strength, then what it says to me is that when I'm in a position of waiting for something to happen, that I can change my perspective on why I am waiting. And that will in turn renew my strength and get me prepared for what it is I'm waiting for. So a lot of patience in, and impatience, in my opinion, is related to our perspective and how we are viewing the waiting process or the situation that is making us impatient. I hope that you are, uh, this is making sense to you, but there is the wait and we're being patient during the wait, and then there's the manifestation. So ask yourself, what is it right now that you wish was manifesting right now, but instead you're in this holding pattern, you're in this waiting pattern. Most of us can find that that happening. Maybe you're waiting to hear news back on a job that you've applied for, or a grant that you applied for, or you know, perhaps you're waiting on, um, I don't know, you know, a marriage proposal or, or, or something like that. And it is driving you mad that you uh, have not gotten that which you're expecting. What I'm praying and offering today is appreciate the time in between. Appreciate this time of building up yourself, of of properly gaining strength and mental acuity so that you can appreciate the manifestation when it comes. We can reframe it and say, you know what? It's not that it's taking too long. It's that I am uh, wanting something to happen perhaps prematurely and it will be much better and I will appreciate it much better if I allow it the time to manifest when it is scheduled to do so. So really, cultivating patience is about working on our perspective and how we're viewing a particular situation. And of course, there's practices, there's spiritual practices. If you pray or if you meditate, there's, there's things to help us to not feel so anxious and so impatient for things to occur. And there are practices that we can do personally to get us through those impatient times. But I think mentally preparing ourselves and changing our perspective in terms of what it is we're waiting for and how waiting for it is not, may not be such a bad thing. Because you know what, what winds up happening sometimes <laughs> is that the growth and things that happen to us and during the time that we are waiting and being patient, once we get what we've been waiting for, we look back and we understand better why it took the amount of time that it took. How many have ever been in that situation where you really wanted something to happen or you really wanted something to take place or you really have had in your mind that a situation needed to change and it didn't change when you wanted to wanted it to exactly, 
But when it did change, you understood now why you had to go through the waiting process, why it took as long as it did. I, I see your hand up. Yes. So that's what I mean. Hi, Mudit. I hope I said that right. That's that that can happen. So think about that. When you think about that, you you can it can help you get through the next situation you find yourself in, where you can decide and determine, you know what? I went through this before where I was really upset and, and, and got myself all worked up about a situation that hadn't worked itself out or hadn't come to pass yet. And then all of a sudden when it did, I completely understood why it took the time that it took. So if we can cultivate that trust that things happen for a reason. If you are a believer in sort of, you know, divine timing, uh, then those kinds of mental attitudes and perspectives can help us be more patient. You know, I refer to, I, I talk about traffic a lot because I used to be someone who got quite impatient in traffic. I live in Washington, DC. So traffic is just inevitable, uh, no matter where you're going. And on any given day, you can start out driving and it can be fairly clear. And all it takes is one small fender bender, one small, it, you know, it can seem like a small fender bender and then traffic can get backed up for miles. And so I've been in those situations where I'm in the car and, and like I said, I've probably left the house a little late. So really I've kind of brought some of this on myself. If I you know, had maybe left earlier or checked uh, ways or Google Maps to see what the traffic situation was before I left the house, perhaps I could have prevented myself from being in this impatient situation. But nevertheless, I, I, I remember one day specifically being backed up pretty, uh, pretty far uh, in, in, a, in a traffic jam. And as I was reflecting on, you know, being upset and, and wondering what was happening, what also came to mind is, you know what? This traffic could be backed up because there's a major accident up front of us where someone could have lost their life. And so who am I to be back here yelling and screaming or, you know, tooting the horn or being upset that I might wind up being 10 or 15 minutes late for work when someone ahead of me may not any longer be alive because they were in an accident. So far be it from me to be impatient about why, you know, traffic is held up if I don't know the fullness of the understanding of why it is. And so rather than get upset about it now, you know what, if I'm in a traffic jam and it's going to take a while, that's a good time to turn on a podcast. You know, it's a good time to turn on a book on tape. There are, you know, there are, are many things that we can do to help cultivate a, a healthier perspective. And that in turn will develop patience in us so that when the, the anticipated goal that we are waiting for arrives, we can receive it and we can appreciate it in a much better, in a much better place. I know a lot of us are, are, are feeling a little bit, as I said earlier, impatient about what's happening in our country. And, and in our world and every day there's something different that happens, but so, and so much of it is out of our control. Uh, so I, I, you know, want to encourage you all this morning as I'm encouraging myself that there are some things we're just going to have to uh, let go and let God, um, you know, to let go of the notion that there's anything that we can do differently to hasten a change, to make things different. But what we can do is, is protect ourselves so that we don't get overly impatient and overly anxious and cause ourselves uh, to be in a place where we're not helpful or useful to anyone because we're, we're, we're so, um, so wound up. So I join with you. As I said, patience is something I want to cultivate. I encourage each one of you today to, to bring some practices in your life that will help you be more patient with yourself, patient with others, and patient with the world around us. I do believe there's a better world uh, ahead for us, but I do understand that it's going to take some time. So let us just join together in prayer um, that we will be able to sustain ourselves so that when the changes that we are waiting for do appear, we are ready, willing, and able to accept them. 
Gracious God, loving spirit, source of all that is, we lay before you this morning our burdens and our worries and our impatience and our anxiety. God, it is in our human nature to want things to happen right away. We are an immediate gratification society, and yet that is not how the world works. You know, It works in ways that we may not fully understand nor have control of, and yet we are in the midst of them. And what we can control is ourselves and our response to the way things are happening in our lives. Help us to be more patient, Help us to understand and to recognize when we can change a situation and when we cannot. But most of all, God, just continue to be with us and to accompany us during these uncertain times so that we are fully able and present and available to appreciate the changes that do come and that do manifest so and that we are fully equipped to participate in them and to be all that you've designed us to be, both to ourselves, to those around us, and to our world. It is in all of your names we pray. Amen. I thank you all um, for joining today. I hope that uh, this has been helpful and encouraging to you. Um, be patient. We're going, we're going to be all right. Um, we're going to get through this one way or another. Uh, but I, I look forward to all of us seeing each other on the other side. Have a blessed and wonderful Sunday. I'll see you here again next week, Sundays at 11 o'clock. Again, please subscribe, um, push the notification button, share this, you know, with friends. Um, let's, let's continue to cultivate a wonderful community of compassion. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great Sunday.